Yeah. Uh, that was fun. Uh, our next poet is oh, Owen. Yeah. Alright. Can everybody hear me? Yep. I'll, I'll try to make a little uh, Johnny at large, or just like the case of Trio at large. <laughs> hey, this, uh, this is my latest poem. <laughs> September sun at Starbucks. That round ball the mad sun has done its duty. The day is warm. I am about as imaginative as a shoe in a store window. I should buy one before a riot of language tries to reach out for lost whims of well-being. No, the ability to buy the ability to buy a shoe is something that is before me, and I take it for granted, much as I take a sunny day for granted. Until it is winter and I am freezing. <laughs> like a well-fed ant that is Chet has had enough, just barely enough brains to follow the herd and help drag a cornflake five feet before a big hobnail boot steps on it, and I blurt and squeak a poem to myself. Tell <laughs> Jess Lee. The refinement of the late early afternoon, the sway of the leaves and the trees, the day turns into dark night. The dark night will be upon us, us people. I wonder what has happened to the afternoon, the quest for excitement. Night falls like a curtain and people roar their circumspection to the wind. Spartan sonnet. Dazed in the sunset, shazes half convince me that invisible chains exist. Stories of hatred and naked betrayal. I sit in a stupor of amazement and not amusement. It's as if somebody, as if I am stuck to my chair and someone has said that I should stick like glue to a chair. At the beach, I received an icy sunburn the Spartan wind, the severe sand, the icy lace of the waves that swoon and roar at the water's throat. The tiny waves give the sand a smooth finish. I, I turn my head and call out to silence. Lovely last line on that one. Thank you, Robert. That's, that's, that, that, was, that was nice of you to say that. Rock Shore. Static of sky, the slate of sky at the beach, the mouth of the sea of the big seabirds, the seagulls. One white and gray, the other all gray. Look at the peaceful sea, look at the peaceful sea. All look up at, no look at me as if I were be filled at once with a tremendous chaos. Chaos to answer the elegance of the shoreline. There a freighter so quiet it mellowed the puffy, cumulus clouds upon the lacy, lazy horizon. A half-sad poem at Starbucks on Sunday from an Angelino. Early arise each morning on the sharp cold air. How must I fare around as, as how must I fare around as I am with such as these? The air does nothing here. The wind is as cold as an icicle. It has no majesty or love. The coffee is not something for dreamers. Poetry surely must be, surely must be something for dreamers. Surely it is as dreamers do, not as far north, the far north of the mind, the far north of the spirit. The San Francisco that is cold, as cold as a bell, like a bill from the bell collectors. Not bellet, but bell collectors. Not bill collectors, but dark, the dark bars, 
where gloom and despair greet you like people who are expecting to go to hell. In hell, you get your choice. The Warriors of the Rams, I mean, the Niners of the Rams, the Warriors of the Lakers, the Giants of the Dodgers. <laughs> Oh, I mean, um, if you're if you're a baseball fan, Buford, I you, and you are a rabid fan. I didn't mean to. Oh, well, anyway. great. Okay, you're right. That's exactly oh, yeah. how it is. Exactly. Cat's House Paul, a turbid human prose poem. Outside the door, a kitten jingles its paws on the keys of caution, wisdom, and restraint. It's time to pause, search the bushes, a vague search for more than they can know. It seems to me that our late pounder, a clever cat, hunted up and down trees and cane fields for birds, like the sleek black hunter he was. If successful, a pile of feathers would appear on our back porch. Pooner might have been proud for himself of the way his paws would swipe out and bring down his prey, usually a robin or a sparrow. Of course he got old and died with a sad but unbloody look on his still fierce mini panther feline face. <laughs> Yeah. Wonder was quite a cat. Yeah. New yeah. Noon Moon, a prose rhapsody. Bribe the British, brutish brunt, the blunt rising, floating, cruising past the lacy nimbus. The night is rich and dark as the eyes of Satan, who passed through the pure doorway on his way up Grant Street on a furtive errand. A cock groups with chaos on the empty street. Chamradre trace mystery in Joel Aviv. It's as if Joel Aviv is a lesson I learned in, a, in my past life. I am reincarnated as a searching druid druid. Yeah. Evening blue sonnet. Searching milkwood feelings for a metaphor. A metaphor for the loud jazz to tell me how it is to flutter like a piece of paper, the carefully flutter of a piece of paper up and down Third Street, Third Street like a wind tunnel. Reality is a voice blown cool, blowing cools in the wind. The wind does not care, nor will it ever care for me at all. It is like impatient Third Street, as impatient as jazz, jazz that refuses to speak to anxiety. Kiss all angels. Trouble in heaven, the clouds vanish. Too many angels spoil the truth. Wood bees travel through their thin air. I am helpless before their thirty muses. The every day seems different and diffident. This poem is going somewhere. I think in an unlikely poem to dance about the fire, leaping as though it has no beginning and no end. The dance will end, nobody leaping in boredom. An idyllic longs to a morose sigh. Her personality like one huge helpless sigh. And oh yes, it's all my fault. <laughs> Dr. File. Dr. John File, who taught, taught Milton at State, now it's at SFSU. I took his course in my senior year, in spring 1968. He was a thin, sandy-haired Englishman. When we came to the part in Milton's biography, whereas he supported the Roundhead Parliament, a right under Cromwell, his reaction to that was, and rightly so. The next semester, I got back to state and bumped into a woman who I shared the class with. She then told me that Dr. File, who was in the habit of taking tea and discussing Browning, had shot himself. She said that he left a note, said goodbye to his colleagues, went down to his basement, and had blown his brains out. P.S. The woman who I like came to ride my place once. I really like that poem too. Thank you, Ruben. That, that's nice of you to say. 
The poem of four elements. One, air. A piece of third street in the cold sleet. Pedestrians try to corner the market on the air. Only the air is free. Nothing else gives us the very gift of life and love. And ask for nothing. Can I the term? Okay, thank you. And ask for nothing in return. Earth. Earth is your earth. It is many. To me, a great mystery. Stolid, little, elusive, and always right. It is there, as humble as a star, and always a logic I should not deny. Water. The rain, always warm and silken, blows out and makes my sight of any, qu any question all right and bright. Warm like a bath, cold like rain and knowledge. Knowledge and emotion are one, like Zeus, sky and thunder. Fire oxidizes, baffles the clown and humanitarian. Sharp and bright, it outdoes me, little me, without effort or effect. Flames are like magic, magic burning my necessity. Thank you very much. Yeah. songs, I, uh, I do a lot of blues, I also write poetry, so here's a couple offerings. Well, most of my poetry uh, is written in Golden Gate Park for the uh, different states of consciousness. <laughs> <laughs> so when I write poetry, I have issues. <laughs> this one is called, I Have a Death Song. This was written many years ago. Yes, I have a death song scented in the grim realities. The abyss echoes its summons with the mother voice of Gaia. It calls. There is not much to do, but a great deal to prevent. The echo summons again. It calls. No beliefs to adopt, but many to abandon. Yes, I responded, I have a death song. I have a death song from Viking ships and Celtic tribes. The aim is to see truth and to hear with the inward ear. Seven obstacles to be eliminated. Seven accomplishments to attain. Enlil, Enlil battled in the skies. Nuclear rain awaits us now. Condemned to your mortal fate. Yourself to yourself at the march shrouded gate. Do not offer me the burdens of hate. The echo summoned again. It called. To see the truth, you must be the truth. Live truth, and you will die in the truth of your own life. Much, much to gain, everything to lose, but nothing you can keep in the darkness of your sleep. Yes, I have a death song as long as I live. Yes, I have a death song as long as I live. This is called In Days of Shaman Royal. This was written many years ago. In Days of Shaman Royal, the call of the raven was the beating of my heart. A spirit that refused to die. Come, they would say, back and forth, fly on nature's wings, and dream our dream. Great catfish in life's rivers of greens and blues, and violet blazing rays, 
the thrones of shivering flowers, weeping lovers, incandescent hues. Imagery that cannot be explained. Said I spoken silently, the rhythms remained unbroken. You can live twice. The wind whispered through the trees, once in your mind, again in ours. A language pulsating in brooks and streams, and dream, I dream, floating within the golden orb, I travel to a king's tomb of darkened waves, sea dragon bays, the fallen leaves could not touch. <coughs> Forests of wine-soaked summer days, the eagles caress the sky, dancing maidens, dancing maidens, maidens, mourn the depths of unknown magicians, elk heard majesty, but they did not cry. They sang of joyful sorrow, castanets, tambourines, hops and lyres, and said through their raindrop tears, dream I dream, dream I dream. I softly returned to Little Garden, turning thrice, I gave many regards. I touched the timeless altars of rose-colored fantasies and visions beyond. But my heart became hardened. Wars for no reason, greed beyond comprehension. Let me return, I screamed, and dream your dream. I try and do Okay. I do a lot of, uh, I do a lot of, uh, I have a lot of my own songs, but uh, when I sing uh, so-called covers and the uh, rearrangements, I do it to keep uh, certain, uh, certain songs, certain, uh, uh, certain musicians alive in everybody's minds and consciousness. So I would like to uh, attempt to touch uh, a very, very old blues song done by one of the, uh, um, considered one of the greatest uh, uh, American blues men. Uh, Robert Johnson, it's called Hell Home. <laughs>
and cross the little valley, flirting with the southern classes of life and the drama of really approaching the train. We never heard it. We made it to the other side. We were helpless in the dream, dancing under the darkening skies all across the green. <laughs> This is a piece that I wrote after reading everything that Rambo wrote. Don't get a whole note. Waking dream. I wander in the desert of your love, a desert of shadows and freezing temperatures. My eyes wept tears of exploding ash. I looked back, my eyes a pair of silvery fish and saw nothing beyond where I stood, existed. In the rawness of the night, my skin bled and dripped. I was seeds, I was shards of glass. Knowledge that you do not love me, so as deceitfully to appear whole, I remain untouchable. I am splinters of glass for your fingers, yes, for your fingers. Now I wake up screaming for you to go, but you cannot hear. You have already gone. My nights are a house built of stars, and I am one of them, more beautiful than the arid darkness I command. I am one of 10,000 piles hand over hand, counted until the end. Your desert will be the chamber of my mouth. Silvery fishes swarm into my mouth. They are stars, but you are greater than they are. I am the night, and you are within. Yeah. Seven more minutes. Seven more minutes. Seven more minutes. Uh, Got a whole book there, read it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, another kind of uh, Leaf shrieked. Leaf shrieked, I call. You may or may not understand how much I love you, trembling. Now you are gone, I can't seem to breathe correctly. Each breath made of tears, touching my jacket as they fall. I wish I were in your arms, or dead. My roof cage aches where your heart should be. Now, nowhere comes a boy. Not a writer, though years ago a musician. Played the trumpet, but our talk is coming. You were the music. You were the song. Yeah. Yeah. City Square. That's me. The city square dreams in the shadow of a steeple. Inch by inch, the red tops of the trees stir in flight against the sun. Underwater forms a vein of green stone. I have found a way to wash the sand out of my body. My cells chase it, like going after a roach. The sand hurls itself in perfect calms. I am alone. My organs lick themselves. The sky is a stopwatch. I am cold. I dream the dead are mourning me. Against the dark, the dogs bark. Against the light, the dust clouds roll. When God the highest turns into an evil by the roadside, I pass his way. The press of metal on my thoughts holds back my tongue. Demons scurrying toward madness roll their eyes. 
the crowd's superior levity cries vanity. My insect rubs its wings. Tonight, the men. Tonight, the men who are running from our joy, like roaches pouring out of Lorca's chest, will sit down with our average guignol minds and do a mathematical poem. I used to be able to say old fashioned before the door, old fashioned, frantic, patterned, pain the roots of my brain. We fly like this, surprised that he cares. Everything hurts. Our grignol wound connects. When lights dim and candle glow is blue, when nothing makes sense anymore, I love you. Someone comes up to join me to the truth. You sing, I refrain, I devise, I listen on the steps. Ten pianos rising, emptying their decks, leave children's voices in their wake. Make love, leave out the stuff that makes sense. <laughs> The process is a nightmare, was, the waves make. We'll close. In the morning of my life, the piano gets up, walk. September in the shade. My coat is warm and heavy waiting for an embarrassment of riches, getting ready to go back to the welcoming committee. I think of my agenda. A few hundred books, not many. The whole world is not like us. You know how to play, not to make conditions better, but to move out of their way. You're always bouncing off the one you love. A lot of caring stuff. The world is a future fuck place. We've been here long enough. Who cares what we may resent later? <laughs> Thank you. Another um, short one um, called Our House. Our House, like Peter Rabbit's. Our head thought ill. Our friend of ours, goodness knows. You know how it is, with certitude or quietude. It is not tired, but depressed. I'll be briefed. There, that was it. That blunder is on my head. Thank you. chickens defends for existence on them. You think they get squashed in the nest. My friend Adrienne down near Moro Rock raises 15 hens for 10 eggs a day. She and her mom Irene eat lots of scrambled eggs and mayonnaise. The eggs often have sticks of hay on them. It is almost obscene how defenseless eggs are. But eggs do get hard when boiled, like hard-boiled detectives. 
Easter always brought hard eggs. I remember the smell of vinegar and the wonderful sliding oil that put squiggles into the colors on the formerly white shells. Some of the Moro rock eggs are rock brown. I told Adrienne I'd heard brown eggs are healthier. She directly point blanked me. No way, no difference. I often think of the commercial, this is your mind on drugs, showing an egg crackling and frying loudly in a hot skillet. Eggs, eggs, eggs. I used to love iron-heavy egg salad and diced tomato grinders from the yellow submarine deli when I was driving taxi nights in Boston. Righteous and incredible fuel. Beauty brings trouble sometimes. I went to an acre of rose plants in Elmsford, New York. I picked three plants, snow, tangerine, red, almost black, aromatics. I planted them in front of the once bland shoebox house. Spring made them bloom, and all was well until out of nowhere, glossy green Japanese beetles appeared inside, chewing holes in the delicate flesh of the flowers. I had to put insect killer on the blossom. I thought, it just happens to kill bugs. It won't smell bad. No, it smelled like death, like suicide itself. <laughs> then holes started appearing in the front yard. It took me a long time to figure out crows were eating the tasty, awful grubs. Almost invisible crows. So much trouble because of beauty. That brings to mind blonde and freckled and slim and sweet Stacy back at Hale Junior High in Woodland Hills, California. I saw her walking by the handball courts one afternoon. I thought, there goes Stacy. Half an hour later, I found out a metallic robot of a beetle had found her too and brutally raped her. People ask if I tell the truth. This time I do. David is a tall glass of water. He is slim and has abundant graying blonde hair. He wears sandals and dresses for the beach, pastel shorts and short sleeve shirts, even.